Good evening, everyone. Thank you for watching Spirit Connections. It's good to be back. And we've taken two weeks off. One, I was actually away on vacay. And then last week, for all you guys who didn't read my posts, I actually had a problem with my eye. I had a, a little mishap. But um, I can see clearly now. The rain's still coming, though. So <laughs> <laughs> There's a rainbow there. Yeah, exactly. There. See? See? see looking, looking on the bright side. That's it. So for all you guys who didn't see my post this week, I have the lovely Mrs. Gretchen Pine on with Hello. me tonight. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Great. I'm glad that I was finally able to finally, get you on. Finally. Like it's been a while. Uh, the last time you were on was when Noel Armstrong was on. Yeah. I think that might have been back in March, maybe, or, or April. Yep. And um, you, you were helping Stephanie out in the chat I room. I was. She was great. <laughs> She's awesome. <laughs> she is. I'm so lucky to have her. I had no idea what I was doing. She was like, do this, do that. I'm like, okay, I can do this. She can do it, I can do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm so happy because like, if I had to do this, because I've seen people try to maneuver having their own show and then trying to answer questions in the chat room. God bless Tim Weisberg who does it because there's no way that I, I'm just not that, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just not that Train. savvy. Yeah. I know. I've never heard a train on this show. I've never heard ever. a train go by at this time. I'm from Iowa. There are tons of trains in Iowa. <laughs> I mean, like, it's not just short. Like, they're, like, 45-minute long trains. It's oh just God. so funny because out of every single week, I've never heard a train go by at this time. No. Nope. Wow. At this time. I think that's so. serendipitous. Actually. I think so too. There's, there's going to be a lot of strange things happening I mean, tonight. Weird things I happen when we're together. Never mind now. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. That, that's by far. Well, I don't know that or the clock flying off the wall what? during the show. That was yeah. another weird one. A clock flew off the wall. Yeah, it's usually on that literally. Door there and yeah, it just kind of removed itself and all on its own. Just yeah. You'll see. Okay. Yeah. This, it's the night is young, my friend. The yes. night is young. <laughs> So Gretchen Pine is here, like I had mentioned, and you are an author. Yes, I am. And you're also an inspirational, motivational speaker. Yes, I am. With La LaRouche Productions. Yes, I am. So, wow. I think it's a wow. <laughs> it is a big wow. It is a big wow. It's a wow to me. Like, so, I never thought in my whole life, like, this is the path this is what's that my happening. life would, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, no, I never thought in a million years. So, help me out. Okay, I'm and, here to help and you. Let us, and let us know. I will enlighten you. <laughs> exactly. Can you enlighten us and tell us a little bit about you and, and how you got to be where you are today? Wow. That's a, I know, that's it's a loaded it's question. Kind of, it's a big, like, it, I don't want to be, it's a long story, I'll try to condense it. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I had this dream. Mm -hmm. I met my husband. I wanted the white picket <laughs> fence and the kids. And I became a hairdresser, and I was, you know, doing hair in Iowa, actually. Mm -hmm. And there's a college there called Palmer College of Chiropractic. First chiropractic college. It, the, the founder of chiropractic founded Palmer College of Chiropractic. So I was doing hair, and this the student came in to get his hair done. I never wanted to be involved with a chiropractic student. I it's think like I know where this is going. It's like officer and the gentleman <laughs> kind of thing you know you, uh -huh. you work hard and put the guy so anyway I did his hair for two years we fell in love he left Massachusetts with himself in a duffel bag and left Iowa with a U-Haul and a girl and that girl was me and we moved out here and I had my hairdressing license I did his hair I gave him mm -hmm. really good head massages by the way that was your trick that, that was, was your like, trick oh like, I'll get any girl you. out there is looking for good, just give him a really good head massage and I um, started managing a hair salon, then eventually opened a hair salon, had twins, got pregnant with our third little baby, and I said, you know, how much stuff do you need? Right. Many, like, something's got to give. I mean, I right. know women out there, and women are amazing, but running a business, being a businesswoman, raising three kids, doing it all, like, something's got to give. I'm like, what's more important, more stuff or my kids? I'm so grateful for that decision. Gave birth to Lulu, and for four years, like, <clears throat> I was just a mom. And I, I got to tell you, you got to put your ego aside to do that because... This is what I tell everybody. <laughs> you have to because we all think our <laughs> egos and our lives are based on how much stuff we have, how much money we make, our prestige. 
that's, that's nothing. And I, I, I did this for my kids, not knowing that our little girl was going to pass away. And on this gray New England day, I was having a, any mother out there, you know it's the toughest job on the planet. It really is. You get no glory. You get no, you don't. You don't and it's hard. It's hard. You're up all night. You got puke all over you. You've got <laughs> food everywhere. You've got laundry, dinner, dishes, clutter. And you're just trying to make everything good for everyone. Like you sacrifice yourself. And um, I was having a really bad mommy day gone to the grocery store with Lulu. The boys were at school, and Lulu was three years old, driving home, gray New England day. Hadn't seen the sun. You know how New England is. Like two months, three months, spring, you don't see the sun. It gets pretty depressing. And Lulu had found her rose-colored glasses in the back seat of the car. And she put them on, and she said, Mama, Mama, I want you to see what I can see. I'm like, Lulu, I'm in no mood. I'm having a bad day. Don't you know we got laundry to do? The boys are going to come home. We've got all this stuff to do. And I thought, you know, just can't you see, you know, can't you see I'm in a bad mood? Can't Mommy have right. a bad day? And I saw what I was doing to her. I looked in the rearview mirror, and I thought, oh, my gosh. Like, she's this beautiful spirit. And I'm like, like she, she was getting that. I'm like, I had a moment of grace, like I had a moment and, I, and I'm so glad I appreciated that moment and we got home and I put on these rose colored glasses that she had found and I was amazed at how my perception of the world changed and I thought, wow, this, this is incredible, like I have this power to change, like the power is within me within all Within you. Exactly. And at the end of the day, we ended up having this beautiful day. And at the end of the day, I said, Lulu, now mind you, she's three. Can I have your rose-colored glasses? And she said to me, no, Mama, you need to find your own. I thought, wow, okay, I'm just going to write this down. I'm just going to write this down so whenever I'm having a really bad day, I'm going to remember this. Like, I need to find my own. Uh, this is up to me. It's not up to any external source. Right. I did not, however, have the courage to make a children's book or, I'm like, oh, it's a stupid little story, no one's going to listen to it, not knowing that three months later, Lulu was going to die in this tragic accident. Mm. And so what happened on that day, we are on a family a vacation on Cape Cod, beautiful day and we went to the beach we went to the beach we weren't parents that just sat around drinking beers right could, like we built sand castles we you know did all that just everything just mermaids just we did everything we stopped later to grab an ice cream cone and an ice cream stand and I had this another moment of grace and I saw Lulu she was in her little wet dress just covered in seas wet you know ocean salt and I'm never going to forget this moment. And I think this is what people need to understand. Like, we all have these moments of grace that you just really need to pause. Say, I'm having a moment here. And pause, because you will remember those moments. And the boys ran out a video arcade, and um, my husband was videotaping Lulu with her mint chocolate chip ice cream, dancing under... There was a little warm, wet, misty rain. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the kind like you run inside, get out of the rain. It was like, right. it, was it was actually kind of refreshing. Mm -hmm. And I'd gone in to get the boys, um, a rainbow appeared, and then another rainbow. And I went outside to bring the boys out. Mm -hmm. And Lulu did what we call her Vanna White pose against what we thought at the time was a, a bicycle rack or a, a fence. It turned out to be a bicycle rack. And she did, ta-da, look at these beautiful rainbows. My hu husband's capturing all this. This rack fell on Lulu, Ugh. and it severed her heart. So what do you do? You, you're on Cape Cod. You're a family of five. And now all of a sudden, you're a family of four. Like, what do you do with that? Right? Like, what, what do, you, do you do? What, what, what do you do with that? And I remember... They wanted to drug you up. Mm -hmm. and I didn't want that. It's like, I want to feel this. Like, I didn't want to feel this, obviously, but it, 
I'm not um, saying that that's necessarily a bad thing for everyone, but um, I remember the next morning, there was a cemetery across the street. Of course, I couldn't sleep. And I went across the cemetery, and there was dew all over, and there was all these old souls buried. It was in Truro. So they're dated like 18, wow. just yeah. old. Mm -hmm. And there were families, and there were all these little kids. And I kept thinking, why hasn't the world stopped? And I laid in the cemetery and just, I could so relate to these families and what happened to them? Where did they go? What was, you know? What was their story? What was their story? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And my husband got up and he was like looking for me. And I think he thought at that point, I probably lost my mind. And I thought, well, maybe I did lose my mind. But there was this connection knowing that I had believed and I more than a belief. I think mm -hmm. a belief system is a belief system, but there's a knowing, and that's beyond belief. I understand that. Yeah, I think you do. And I, yeah, I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew, as painful as it was and as much as I felt, that Lulu wasn't gone. Like, there was something there. So we drove back over the bridge to um, our home, and the media swarmed mm -hmm. our home. And we, we couldn't go home. And you're in this horrible space, and you can't even go home. So we stayed at Warren's parents' summer cottage. And um, of course, I couldn't sleep. We did the funeral, did all, and I displayed Lulu's story in her rose colored glasses because I, I wanted people to know. That was your moment. That was your moment of appreciating life and what life had to offer. Well, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, I wanted people to know that this angel existed. I wanted people to know that she had this message, that her life wasn't just about this little girl and life and death, like nobody's life is. There's a message and, and a, an important thing that, that people are here for, and when they're done, they, they've delivered their message. Nothing is without significance. And um, we... I couldn't sleep, so I remembered this story about her rose-colored glasses, and I thought, you know what? You know what? This is what she came for. I just got chills, by the way. This was her purpose. Mm -hmm. This was, And I'm going to write these stories, and I'm going to write down every story that I can remember. And I go down to her little oceanfront. We have a little tiny, little postage stamp piece of heaven oceanfront beach lot. And I would just, I started to write. I couldn't sleep. So I'd get up at 4 30 in the morning, the sun would rise. And serendipitously, Lulu's buried right across the harbor. And I would just write down every single story because I wanted to remember Everything. every moment. Every moment. But what came out, unknowance to me at the time, were these amazing children's stories, which were actually Lulu's stories that I was channeling because I was in this very raw, pure, amazing place. And I just wrote everything down, everything down, everything down. And they all sort of came out in this amazing, like, rhythmic form. And it flowed, it didn't it? Oh, yeah. It was just effortless. Like there was no thought. Uh, exactly, just effortless. Just effortless. Go, go. It was a gift. Mm -hmm. And ironically, when Lulu was in the physical form, she would, used to walk around with a notepad, writing. I'd say, Lulu, what are you writing? She was like, a story. What really? story are you writing? I can't tell you, but it's a story. Mm -hmm. And I believe these are the stories that Lulu was writing, the ones that she couldn't finish. And um, I think she, she left them to me. And one particular morning, I was sitting down on a little beach lot, and I hadn't smiled or laughed in months. I forgot what that felt like. Like you, you don't realize like you're in such a place, like you, you forget that you forgot to laugh or smile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm writing, 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 and this little, I felt this like, like horrible, bristly, brushy thing up against my leg. And I'm like, I almost screamed. I'm like, what is that? Like, thank God I didn't scream because it was the fattest, biggest, hugest skunk that you could ever imagine. And he brushed past me, waddled down, down the beach and mm -hmm. into this burrow. And this scream that never came out 
turn into this giggle and then this laugh and I'm like, oh my God, this skunk taught me that I could laugh again. Like, it was, I can laugh again. Do this you know is, how huge that is? It's huge. That, that's huge, that's huge. Um, we created a little beautiful memorial garden. We started digging in the July hot weather and made a seashell garden. We never gardened before, but we planted hydrangeas and hibiscus and hostas. And to this day, it's a beautiful memorial garden for Lulu right on the water. And it says, angels and butterflies welcome. And, you know, I can't express how it feels to know that, you know, people think when someone dies, they're gone, but they're not. You know, Maureen Hancock says, mm -hmm. I'm not dead, I'm just different. Just different. I feel her, I feel her, and there's incredible joy. And as you do, I mean, th think about it. Think of just with you channeling her in mm -hmm. by writing all these books. How many books have you written because of Lulu? Um, nine are written. Three are published. I'm mm -hmm. on my fourth one uh, as far as the illustrations go and the publishing, and the but so many other things that I never would have done ever in my life. Never would have had the courage. Never in a million years. I would never have had the courage to publish a children's book. Um, I never, well, when, when Lulu died and, and it was two years right before Christmas, Lulu's rose colored glasses was a reality. And that book got into my hands. And I thought, and I read it, and there was just such tears of joy. And I thought, this is Lulu telling me, Mama, it's time to find your rose, like it's time to find your happiness again. And that book and her message before she died right. saved my life. Right. It really did. I mean. And now you're sharing it. You're exactly. sharing it. Exactly. Think of how many people that are in your same situation that might not have that voice, that strong enough voice, or, or might not have the confidence to, to tr try to just listen to their inner voice or, or see if anybody gives well, them. Well, you know, I never did either, honey. Right. And, and, and the, the point was, uh, my thought was, after Lulu died, my thought was, I've lost a child. If I can go through this, what else is there to be afraid of? Because fear holds us back. Mm -hmm. Fear keeps us from doing what we're supposed to do. Seriously. But it, I believe me, I know. Because <laughs> I've been there too, where yeah. I've, I finally had to just kind of stop well, right. and just go. Judgment. What are people going to think if I exactly. say I'm a psychic, spiritual medium? Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to think I've lost my mind. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been there. I've yeah. been there. And what I've learned is you you know within your heart and with your soul what you're put on this earth yeah. to do and you have to own it mm -hmm. because if you don't own it and you choose to go different other paths it's always going to bring you to the right path that you're supposed to be on yeah and if you sure. don't own it yeah you're just gonna become miserable right. <laughs> because you, you you're, will, gonna, you you're gonna feel like you're missing out on something or something isn't matching up and and that's mm -hmm. why you have to be true to yourself at all times you have to no matter mm -hmm. what um who said it? Deepak Chopra. The hardest thing for him in his life um, lessons was he, oh, he still, as evolved as he mm -hmm. appears to be, he still worries about what other people think. And there's a quote that says, it's none of your business what other people think of you. And if you think of it that way, it really isn't. You know, it's, it's just not. And I think you know, we all hold ourselves back out of fear, 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 mm -hmm. fear. And it's like, when I got Lulu's book in my hand, the rose-colored glasses, I'm like, thinking about the press and what they did to us when Lulu died. Right. I thought, you SOBs, you're gonna, you're gonna do this to us at a time like this. I'm gonna do what I need to do to let you know what happens after that. And I have to say, I have to say, um, they were very good to us, very good. So we just went door to door, store to store, media to media, media to media, and we, we were in the Boston Globe, the Ladies' Home Journal, Good Morning America, I mean, mm -hmm. Chicago Tribune, we just, it's like there was no fear there for me anymore. What were they gonna do, say no? Right. 
then you know either push him more or go go somewhere else. But there's a beautiful story here that you can find your happiness again. That spirit lives on. That spending time with your children is very important. That um, everybody's life has a purpose. And one of the things that really touched me was um, I saw this. I don't even know what it was. It was an email. It's this little stick figure. And no matter what religion you mm -hmm. are, it doesn't matter. This has to do with spirituality. And, but this must have been a Christian-based thing, and, and that's a wonderful thing as well. There's a little stick figure carrying this cross, and he's walking, walking, he's dragging this cross, and all these other stick figures are running past him. And he's like, there's no words, but you just get this feeling like, woe is me, this is horrible, this is terrible. He's dragging this cross, and everybody's up ahead of him. And then all of a sudden, you just see him minutes later, they come across this big gorge. And the stick figure takes this cross off and lays it across the gorge. And all these other stick figures go across. And then he does too, and then he's free. And there was only a few words, and that was at the very end. And it says, sometimes the cross that you bear is your greatest gift. I thought, isn't that the truth? Yes. Yes, Gretchen, it is the truth. <laughs> That's what I just felt like I was saying. Now, as far as doing these, these books, it's, first of all, where can you find, say if someone was interested in, in buying or purchasing one of these books? They can go to lulubellbooks.com or the lulufoundation.org, which we've mm -hmm. created a foundation for Lulu. Um, and this is, that was my next question. Yeah, Lulu has her so. own foundation. Um, we, we created this program called Dream, Believe, and Do in inner city mm -hmm. schools. We've done a lot of things. We've partnered with the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club. We've had Lulu Walks. Um, our newest project with, was with inner city kids at uh, the Alfred Gome School in New Bedford. I'm telling you. It's amazing how uh, society all of a sudden kind of comes together when it, when it becomes a, whether it's, it's a walk or um, just raising awareness, you know, they, they, people do really come together do, once you have your voice. Exactly, mm -hmm. and it's an energetic thing. It's like, and that's one of the things I experienced, which I never expected to. Like, there are gifts in, in this horrible experience, and one is you get to experience humanity with all their walls down, their egos are out the door. Like, how can you have an ego when you approach a woman who's lost a child or right. a family? And you just feel this unconditional love. And it's so beautiful and empowering. And then when you, when you start to reach out and help out, like, it has so humbled me. Mm -hmm. And I think if someone's been humbled, that is a beautiful gift and um, then you attract others. And people want to help, like most people are good. I, I think that's a problem with society. You know, you hear this, all the media, everything's horrible, everything's rotten. Exploited, everything's, dead, everything's, everything's exploited. exploited. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not so. I think it's false, mm -hmm. I think it's wrong. I think 80% of the people or more want to do good things and are good people, but through the media, it's it's just it's just all the horrible things are just out there, and that's what people tend to tell. The world's terrible. Right. Everything's awful, right. and that's not true. It's false. It's not true. Now, once you started doing writing the books, mm -hmm. what led you into letter Loretta Larouche Productions to do the inspirational, this, motivational speaking? Yeah. Well, I've done a lot of speaking prior to. I've, okay. I've done events um, in Chicago, Iowa, um, just around. I've done a lot of fundraising events, mm -hmm. speaking, talking about Lulu, television shows, read it, blah, blah. Um, yeah, again, it's all serendipitous. Um, there was a big event at the Book Shack in Plymouth called The Big Read promoting children's literacy, mm -hmm. which I'm huge, um, a huge advocate. And I went and I read to the children, um, and I just, I read Lulu's books, just the way I read, just, that's how I roll, and I love the energy of kids. Like, I swear to you, I have experienced on numerous occasions when children channel Lulu. I, I'm not oh, even I kidding. Can, I, 
they and they all want to know about Lulu and Lulu, Lulu, Lulu. It's just so cool, and it, that fills my soul really huge. And um, I got done reading the children's books. Well, happenstance, the the new owners of the book shack, which took over all the mm -hmm. borders that went out of business. Yes. Mm -hmm. She was the vice president of Loretta LaRoche Productions. And I just shook her hand when I was done. I go, thank you for having me. It was a wonderful event. She goes, I love the way you read. It comes right from your heart. And would you like, you know, would you like to have a meeting, blah, blah, blah. And so the next thing you know, I had the meeting and shared my story. And that's sort of how it all And happened. that's how it all. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, Steph, do we have any questions so far? No, we don't. No? Okay. No. I think everybody's, I, I've noticed during this show, I've, I haven't really talked much because I'm, I'm sorry, just, am I no, just like blah, 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 no, blah, blah. No, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those shows and I think Steph can agree with me. Sometimes we just have these guests on and we end up just kind of staring at you and, and it's not in a bad way, but no, it's, it's just, just listening to your story is, I, I don't want to say fascinating, but almost it just captures our attention so mm -hmm. much that we just want to know more and more and exactly okay. just stare at you. exactly so that's why <laughs> so don't take it offensively I, just, <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm like I'm oh so am quiet, I like so, putting yeah, out some bad vibes no, no, no. No. that's why I was like oh wait are there any questions I, I guess I should ask I think it, so. as much as your story is is sad it's so important for people to know at the same time like Lulu's story of the rose color, color glasses are just it's it's one of those things that needs to be shared with people and us just listening to you, just letting you take over the whole hour, just talking, is going out there to so many people. So they understand, just the way that we have. We get a little bit of a taste of it. I know I read Maureen Hancock's book, so I got a little mm -hmm. bit of taste of Lulu oh, yeah. in there. And I didn't know the whole time that you were sitting next to me that time that you were a part of Lulu. And oh, okay. just having people understand and know and see your strength and your story is so important, I think. I'm sure you agree. No, I do. Absolutely, I do. It, and it's it's one of those things, that, especially in b what I do, being a medium, mm -hmm. I deal with so many bereaved parents and, oh my gosh. and people that don't have that strength yet, where you where you're at, where you mm -hmm. can do all of this stuff and give back. And I, I've dealt with some people that are still at the very beginning stages mm -hmm. of loss, and I'm hoping that those parents are watching tonight. You know, I really hope they, they are and I you know we do hold bereavement support groups mm -hmm. at Lulu's House of Hope. We we did we have a little was a little ho dunk cottage, but mm -hmm. we've redone it. Our next uh, group is Tuesday, June nineteenth. Excellent. Where and is that located? Lulu's House of Hope, it's at Ten Nobska Way in Wareham, Tuesday night, six o'clock. Um, we just only do it in the summers simply because it's not winterized, it's but a, mm -hmm. we're hoping to to finish that off so we can continue it throughout the winter but um, I do inspire writing courses and and there there's no judgment here but I and I won't mention names but <clears throat> after Lulu died Warren and I had gone to a bereavement support group and these parents had lost their children 10 mm -hmm. 20 years ago mm -hmm. and they were stuck in this horrible mm -hmm. place still and we walked away I'm like I will never go back and I will not be where those people are right now. And I think, mm -hmm. and no offense, and this is not derived toward any religion, but I think the missing link, I grew up Southern Baptist. Mm -hmm. So I am a recovering Southern Baptist, <laughs> and God is helping me with that. <laughs> but, and, I, and no offense to you that, but people seek out mediums like you and Maureen mm -hmm. Hancock mm -hmm. because there's a missing link there. And it's like, but people need to know, and you say this, and Maureen says, you can do this yourself. Yes. yes. You, not that we don't need you, but we don't need you. Right. You can teach others. And, and mm -hmm. I think I just, I was so lucky enough. I think Lulu was evolved enough that I had no choice. But I think every parent can tap into that. I do. I do. It's beautiful. And I can only imagine being so close to a child, being having that. I'm not a mother, but I can only imagine that mother and child bond. Where, mm -hmm. how could you not tap into that? Well, That's I think they do, but I think what happens, and you know, energy. Mm -hmm. When you're in such a desperate, dark spot, their energy's like up here vibrating. Oh yeah. And you're down here, like in the lowest of low. There's no way. 
And so you, as the medium, connect the two. But if a person can learn, I always say my heart was broken, but it was mm -hmm. broken open. Mm -hmm. So much pain, so much incredible pain, but so much incredible love that somehow, by the grace of God and Lulu, I was able to increase my vibration to meet up with her. And I think the channeled writing, I mean, that the, the writings that I wrote were not for me. I know it with all my heart. And I think everyone and anyone can do that. And I think um, you are a great catalyst for that, teaching others, mm -hmm. and, and you not allowing the judgment of others to not um, suppress you mm -hmm. is huge because I think we all do that. And it's, it's messages and validations of, again, mm -hmm. you know, even though they're not here physically, they're still here they're among here. us. They and, are. And they show signs. And, they do. you know, I, I love to offer the comfort of that because mm -hmm. a lot of people just want that. That's all I want. That just, just to know that they're yeah. still here. And, yeah. and I always say I'm not a therapist. I'm not um, a coping mechanism. You know, right. I, I, but I'm sure people place okay. that on you. They do. And you have to. They do. And, and that's when you have to say, mm -hmm. I am not a therapist and I'm not, but I'm here to provide comfort mm -hmm. and to allow messages and validations to come through so you know that they are here. And, they are. They and, are. But, you know, you said it too. And I always say it, and Steph always says it, that you can do this too. You can, as long as you're aware and, and, I'm sure for you, the signs have been abundant. Oh my gosh, the signs are ever. I'll, I'll give you so much. Are we okay? I know. What do we do? How we do? Yeah, we, we have okay? a half hour. Okay. And, yeah. and also, just for you guys at home, if you do have any questions or if you want to contact Gretchen at all, please, um, you can info Steph on in the chat room, and she can give you some info. And I, I know on the screen that guys are going to be putting Gretchen's information. But if you have any questions for Gretchen, please feel free to add your two cents into the chat room. So. Gretchen can answer them right now. <laughs> if, well, I'll try. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, the, we're, we're talking about signs. signs. There's mm -hmm. so many, and you know, there's certain people that would poo-poo that. Like, but when you get a lot of them, and once you start opening to, you know, Albert Einstein says either everything's a miracle or nothing is, and right. I choose to believe everything is. It is. And it is. And um, <laughs> it. It wasn't long after Lulu died. I was in that really dark space. And I have to say, the grieving process is a process. And absolutely, there are times I would just curl up on a little ball on, on the floor in a room. Um, let me go back. I would rock Lulu at night. Mm -hmm. And I would say to myself, I wouldn't even say to myself, I would have this voice in my head going, this isn't going to last. This isn't going to last. And I would just go, stop thinking that. Stop thinking that. I understand that. But I think, mm -hmm. I believe, no, I know. My soul knew something before I did. My soul was telling me something. And I didn't want to listen. I couldn't listen. As a mm -hmm. mother, how could you listen to that? Mm -hmm. Like, she's going to grow up. She's going to grow up. That's why. Prior to that, I was pregnant with her. I had to paint angels in a room. Like, I, she had to have angels in her room. I don't know why, I just, it, I needed mm -hmm. to paint angels in there. Um, after Lulu died, my girlfriend said, let's go shopping. Come on, we're going to take you shopping. We're going to get you out of this grief mode. We're going to mm -hmm. go shopping. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm not really a big shy. No, no, I'm not. No, no, I don't want to go. I'm like, no, we're bringing you shopping. And so they said, um, we'll meet you at Silver City Gallery Mall. Yeah. Filings, 5 o'clock on Friday. I'll go. I get there a little before they did. I walked in, swear to God, huge display, huge, right at the front door, Lulu handbags. Lulu, like every kind of handbag you can imagine with the name Lulu across. No way, like, I mean, come on now. So my girlfriend show up, I'm like, oh. And they're like, oh. So of course we were buying all these Lulu handbags <laughs> for ourselves and all of our friends and everyone. You buy the whole display. Um, yeah, <laughs> got everything and it says Lulu right yes. on there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we go, we bring all the handbags we bought for mothers, sisters, girlfriends, like everybody had to have a Lulu handbag, of course. 
we go to ring them up, and the girl at the register said, this is weird, they're not in the system. I've never seen these handbags before. There's, there's no, like the SKUs would not read in, nothing. She had to call the manager, they came over. Those handbags arrived the night before. They didn't have time to put, oh to put them in the system. Oh my gosh. Y you can't make that no, stuff up. No, you can't. And, and I'm gonna say, even when Noel was on, we were talking and it was a side, we would, we got into talking about how her brother is part of this um, candy bar company or this dark chocolate company, and I, of course, I said, "Well, what's what are the candy bars called?" And this is while Gretchen was in the chat room with with Steph, and she said, "Oh, that's right, the, they were the <laughs> the Lulu chocolates," <laughs> and I'm like thinking to myself, and and I didn't really have a chance to talk to Gretchen yet yeah. until I think it was I'm, I think you mentioned her name afterwards. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it uh, was afterwards it, yeah, because. Yeah. We're yeah, it like, was just at that moment. <laughs> there, we were like, "What?" Oh my God! Yeah, well, you know, uh, well, I've I've had moments where I've experienced her, and I'm sure every parent that's mm -hmm. lost a child probably experiences. But I could just feel her with me, and it's like Lulu is very joyous and um, expressive and giddy and just what's the word I'm looking for? Just she's was, a kid. She was a kid. <laughs> it was impossible to be a, in a bad mood mm -hmm. in her presence. It really was. And I've had moments where I just feel this Lulu joy. You know, this Lulu, we call her joy. Joy, yeah. joy, joy. And it's just, I think when you're in vibration increases like that. And when I had that experience with Morning Hancock, and it's in her book, but it's about someone else experiencing that energy. And I'm like, oh, I'm not crazy. I knew I wasn't crazy. Yeah. But it was that same energy. And then that's when, when you can, I always say um, the best way to deal with grief and death is honoring the one that you've loved and carrying them with you, finding your joy, finding your happiness, and carrying them with you. And when you're in that dark space, they just can't come through. Well, you know, right. you work with mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. And um, when I ever experienced Maureen, doing the Lulu thing, I was like, this is incredible. Like, someone else is experiencing what I'm experiencing, and as crazy as it seems that I've gone through this horrible, dark time that I can feel this joy. Absolutely. And, it, it, and the signs have been incredible everywhere, and I think everyone can experience those signs. They absolutely, you're right. They can, they can, and it's just, it might take time for some to be able to want to actually open up to see the signs because I know a lot of people hone in, um, a lot of people hone in on dreams. Why can't, I just want to dream, I just want to dream. And, and I always tell people, well, there's other ways of them showing signs, whether yeah. it's through, um, no, I don't know, I know you said when you're in your garden, you wrote butterflies and angels are welcome. So mm -hmm. I don't know if butterflies are a big sign for They're you. They're a huge sign, dragonflies, so. butterflies, rainbows, mm -hmm. obviously. But that's what I mean. Like it could be a butterfly, dragonfly, hawks are hu hawks are huge for hawks. me. Cardinals are big. So everybody has their own. So whether it's a dream or not, I know uh, who wouldn't want to dream about our loved ones. But mm -hmm. even if it's a song on the radio, there's you the the signs are endless. The possibilities of signs are endless. We just have to be aware, and mm -hmm. and nothing is coincidental. Sorry, folks. That's what I I truly believe. There's no such thing as a coincidence, and um, I think coincidence, calling it a coincidence, is also kind of fear, <laughs> in a sense, because you're not allowing right. it to be you're not allowing something. It. You know, but I, I have to say, and I agree 100% mm -hmm. with what you're saying, and, and I do believe that, but here's, here's my dilemma, and I, I'm mm -hmm. totally with you. Um, I, w I was reading this book. You know, of course, when Lulu died, I read every spiritual. Right. I was reading yep. spiritual books mm -hmm. before Lulu died. But after she died, I mean, my, my stack by my bed, mm -hmm. you know, every night. just. And I won't mention the name of the book because I love books. I'm not going to dish a book. But it was about the law of attraction. Okay. And you know how when you set in your mind, okay, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to energetically set myself. I'm going to have this great day. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna feel what it feels like to have this amazing day. It was right before Christmas. 
we had a, our, our dog at the time was a brand new puppy. And I didn't want to leave her home alone. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I had gone out Christmas shopping, which I hate to do. But I'm like, no, no, no. I've just read this book on about law of attraction. So I had this brand new great little red coat fur collar. And I'm driving to the mall and I'm experiencing what it feels like to get front row parking. So I'm driving and I, oh my gosh, I got front row parking right at the Dartmouth Mall, right in front of, you know, J.C. Yes. Penney there. Mm -hmm. Front row, I'm like, this stuff is great. I'm feeling awesome. I'm experiencing this. And then I'm feeling what it's going to feel like to go through every line there in, or every mm -hmm. store, no lines. I, oh my God, did it ever happen? Mm -hmm. It's just like every store, there were no lines. I came out with my, and by the way, I had taken my beautiful red coat off because I got in front row parking and I don't want to shop with a coat on. Right, right. I get back to the car, throw my bags in. I'm a half hour from home, as you know. It's about, what, 25 minutes, half hour. Get back into the car, and our sweet little puppy had, I'm not going to swear, but I'll, the SH <laughs> word, runny SH, oh. all over the car, actually in the cup holders, oh all my. over my red coat, everywhere. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Seriously? Like, I'm vibrating good stuff right now. I know. Like, how <laughs> how did this, this happen? happen? I'm like, I've got nothing to clean up. It's cold. I'm a half hour from home. What am I going to do? I could have gotten in a really bad place. My brand new coat, roll down all the windows, crank the heat. I happen to have a plastic grocery bag, which is gross. Try to, whatever. Roll down a half hour from home, and I'm like, I get from Dartmouth to New Bedford. And all of a sudden, I just started cracking up laughing. I'm like, is this some kind of sign? And to me, it was like, and I wrote about, I'm writing a memoir about Lulu, but it, you know, you can do all these things. Sometimes it just happens. Yeah. And I won't say the S-H. Yep, yep. <laughs> I get it. So I like, know. we, like, it's not a calculated thing. Like, you can't prevent certain things. Right. But the thing is, how do you react when it happens? And that's where the power comes in. And that's when it's all in your reaction. Because <laughs> if you is. react, like, believe me, I can be a hothead, too. I come off as being, oh, great, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, poor Steph. He has it on the phone, <laughs> but, but um, I, you We know, all need to but, vent. Exactly. We all need to vent, but it's true. At that moment, that's that snap decision mm -hmm. where you have to have mm -hmm. that control on yeah. yourself and yeah. say, okay. We have a choice right. on how we react. Sure, we can be frustrated, but does it mean, you know, doing something drastic? Maybe someone... Well, I, maybe, you know, that's the whole thing as humans. Like, we like to think we're in control. Mm -hmm. And when you lose a child or a dog does it in the car, like, you realize you really, you really don't. You don't. <laughs> it's just like planning. It's, it's planning your life away. I can remember when I was 20 years old, I had this life plan for myself. Oh, and, right. and, you know, I, I look back now and everything that I had planned is not <laughs> in, in, you know, in the picture. And I am so happy. I've never been more happier in my life at the age that I'm at now. You guys don't need to know. But, <laughs> but oh my goodness. Um, you know, I've, I've never been more happier in this place that I'm at in my life right now. That's but so awesome. But if you were to ask me when I was 20 what I'd be doing now, I would say a totally different answer. And, and um, obviously my life did not go the way I planned it. But does anyone? Okay, really? I was just gonna say, who can really plan it out? You can try. You can well, attempt. Well, you know, or... like, like so we got married. We got the white picket fence. We did mm -hmm. all that. Everything was going as planned. Right. Two kids. It wasn't perfect. It was perfect enough. Then this tragedy happens, and I often use our white picket fence as a metaphor. It's a wooden white picket right, fence. Right. Posts fall apart. It, you know, you got to scrape it. You got to replace parts. It, you know, it, it's not easy. Life, it deteriorates and you have yeah. to vamp it up and yeah. paint it again and reconstruct it yeah. so it stands up tall and strong. Oh, that That's sounded true. good. Yeah, it sounded write really good. Stuff. Yeah, write, write it down. down. <laughs> That's a quote. That's a, I don't have to write it down. It's recorded. I'm going <laughs> to quote good. that on my Facebook quote that. later. <laughs> yeah, quote it. That's a quote. <laughs> but it, it's true and, and, and I'm glad that you brought that, um, that I was just going to say eulogy. Jeez. I just had to do one this past Friday, so that's, uh, that's on my mind. But um, Oh, I'll tell you another um, 
sign. I was gonna say analogy. Swear to you. I was gonna say eulogy, analogy. analogy. Was gonna say that, yeah, that was a slip. Yeah, a little Floridian yeah. slip. Right before Lulu died, two weeks before, my sister had come to visit, mm -hmm. and we were visiting the Agawam Cemetery looking at the old headstones. She's like, Gretchen, what do you think happens? I go, you know, I know we've, we've been programmed a certain way, but I'd like to think that we all come into this life with a purpose, and when that purpose is fulfilled, we leave. Now, this is before Lulu died, and we were just looking at all these headstones and all the stuff, not knowing what was going to happen. And my sister asked Lulu while she was vid visiting, what would you like for your birthday? She goes, I want the rainbow princess Barbie. Now, she died under rainbows. She wanted the rainbow, and my sister always being late for everything. Right. The Barbie didn't arrive for Lulu's last birthday. It arrived right before her death, and, the rain and she died under the rainbows. The rainbow princess came, and if you look at that, you can Google it, you can look online. If you look at the rainbow princess Barbie, in the background, there's a cemetery, like in the casing. How many of you guys are Googling right now? Rainbow Princess Barbie. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it, there's an old cemetery in the background of the Rainbow Princess Barbie. So we, at her <clears throat> funeral, there was the Rainbow Princess, like that arrived in the mail right before. You, you can't make this stuff up. No, no, you, you can't. You, you just can't. You can't, and you know, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, I don't care, you know, what class you're in. Death affects everybody. Of course it does. Well, and, yeah. you know, it, no one's a stranger to it, and it's what you do with it. Mm -hmm. And how you learn to handle and cope and learn to grieve. You have to learn to grieve. What are you going to do with all of those emotions? How are you going to create something else. Not even something else, but maybe kind of blossom a, a part of you. Are you going to stay in the, the shadows mm -hmm. or are you going to grow from it? You know, and it's amazing. hard and it's, it's different for each and every one of us. And um, But it's something that you have to think about. You know, you know I think and in I this don't mean, country... I don't mean you, I just no, mean... No, not in, in me, general. no, us all. Right. Like, we live in a country and a culture well, we don't talk about grief. Mm -hmm. In other cultures, it's different. You know, they wear the black for a year. And it's not because, well, it symbolizes the mourning, but black absorbs all energy. Mm -hmm. That's why they wear the black, because you're absorbing all the energy rather than mm -hmm. reflecting it. Um, in this country, we just like go, you know, we hate going to the funerals. We hate going to the thing. Just get it over with, and let's just try to get back to our just regulars. Move on. Let's be just move the, on. Yeah, the hamster in the wheel again. Thank God that week was over. Right. You know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. And I hate to say it like that, but, no, that, but that's the truth. It's a big mentality. Like. That's the truth. You know, and these poor people, how can I help them? What can I do? Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do, so I'm just not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's through the love, through the hugs, through the thing is, you don't, you don't have to say anything. Right. It's just, there's an energy there. And acknowledging that they're, they're not gone. They're not, the veil between here and there is just. Especially now, I know, I was gonna say, sorry to interrupt, but I no, was gonna say, good. Steph and I always talk about how, especially within the past few months, we've noticed a huge energy shift. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about the mm -hmm. veil, the mm -hmm. veil, the, the veil, the thale <laughs> veil. <laughs> the veil, I feel, is just thinning and thinning and thinning. It is. I think as you know. more and more people are aware and enlightened, I, I, I know not everyone has a dream, but um, I do want to share. I had a dream with Lulu um, three years ago. I kept thinking in my mind, you know, that song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, Over the Rainbow. Mm -hmm. You're not over the rainbow. What is that? What is that? What is that? Like, I feel you. I know you're not somewhere else. What is that? And I fell asleep thinking of her dancing underneath the double rainbows. And I fell into this deep sleep. And when I woke up in my dream, I was in this blank white space, much like The Matrix. Have you seen that movie? Yes. Keanu Reeves. Love that mm -hmm. movie. No walls, no windows, white space. And Lulu came out of the corner of my eye and she was carrying her blankie, which is significant because that girl never went a day without her blankie and do you know we could not find it when she passed. And by the way, Maureen Hancock said she brought it with her. 
<laughs> but she had her blanket and I scooped her up and can you imagine like holding her, like our hearts were beating together and I held her for this amazing eternity. Just the joy was tangible. Like there was no difference between that dream and you and I sitting here. It was just joyous and she was so excited. Mama, let me show you what, what I do. Let me show you what I do. And she brought me to a space that was um, it's much like the Aurora Borealis, mm -hmm. only with a white background, not a black background. And all these beautiful colors of the rainbow are liquid and they're flowing. And she became an empty silhouette, like an empty glass of water. And all these colors went through her. And then she started to dance. And all these colors moved through her and around her. And as, the faster she danced and giggled, the faster the colors. Remember those things when you were a kid, the, the spinning color right, wheels? Yes. Mm -hmm. Colors were flying and giggling. And I was like in awe. And she said, Mama, take my, she stopped. She said, take my hands. I want you to do this too. I'm like, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. Take my hands. She was demanding. Mm -hmm. Take my hands. And I became just like Lulu, this beautiful empty silhouette. And we danced and we created this world around us and through us and there was so much joy and it was liquid and beautiful and tangible and we stopped and she looked at me which is very strange because she didn't have eyes but it was mm -hmm. this she said mama don't you see I'm not over the rainbow I am the rainbow and the message was, well, the alarm clock started to go off. I'm like, I don't want to wake up. Don't I leave me. That. No, I hate mm -hmm. that. She goes, no, Mama, Mama, you got to get this. And the message was, dream, believe, and do. I am the rainbow, and so are you. So that's the next children's story, and that's the program we implemented for inner city schools at the Gome School. And that's the documentary we created, and that's why we had the roast for Mayor Lang, and that's it, like because of this dream. And I'm like, this is, again, with Lulu's Rose Color Glass, this mm -hmm. is a stupid thing, a stupid dream. It changed my perception. I'm like, you know, I gotta believe in this dream. This was a real Dream, believe, and do. Right. I am the rainbow, and so are you. We are all these beautiful, magnificent, wonderful energies and colors. We just have to know it and believe it. And um, I think that's, that's a huge key. Mm -hmm. It really, it is, it is, I mean, doing, because I'm also, you know, a, a Reiki master and I mm -hmm. align chakras and I'm constantly working in energy fields mm -hmm. along with being a medium, you yeah. know, and it's true and it's, you have to kind of just, when, go ahead. No, well, when, was, uh, speaking of chakras, yeah. energy, mm -hmm. like they're, they're all, they're all colored, it's all the symbolic. colors of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's a huge just, energy oh, field. And that's what it is. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And so it's amazing to me to hear that story of, of your dream and how all of these colors were just kind of symbolic. Not only is the rainbow symbolic, but mm -hmm. all these other beautiful colors that were, mm -hmm. you know, going through her and going through you. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's all the writing's on the wall. The, the writing's on all, the wall. You know? Well, you know, it's really cool. Like looking back, we we sort of followed this program that we put in place at this inner city school and did a documentary on it and when you see inner city kids who are 90 percent of them are impoverished mm -hmm. and you see them getting up on a microphone saying my name is barack obama i learned that i could become the first black president in the united states because i learned to dream believe and do i mean how cool is that yeah it's you know you, you can't put a value on that and you can't and the fact that people listen to your crazy dreams and people but follow not it. crazy think of how simple <laughs> that is dream believe and do yeah how simple is that statement it is so simple dream but I think it, it's believe it and do, do it. it and what's I think so magical about that formula because I've had times in my life where I just you know you get so tired you just Mm -hmm. You don't want to follow a dream. You don't believe in the dream. But if you actually just pick up your feet, you know that song, one foot in front of the other? Yeah. If you just start doing, then it works in the reverse. If you start doing, then you start believing, and then you remember your dream. It's, it's, um. It's true. I it's don't know. true. 
Now, Steph, I know we are running out of time because we yes. only have a few more minutes, but are there any questions? It's okay if there aren't. I had one a while ago. It was from Carl, um, but my chat room actually erased it. So oh, no. We'll get that, that one after the show, I guess. <laughs> Well, Carl's here anyway, so yes. he can always ask the question yeah. later. Ask it later. After, you yeah. Know. Um, now, next week, I'm going to have Nicole Stevens on. You are. Who is also a bereaved parent. Yep. And spirit yep. medium. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. I think, you know, what I find fascinating is again, we've all been programmed with our religions, and yet people go to mediums to find mm -hmm. the solace. and. I'm not saying that, um, again, that's, I'm not judging it, um, but I think that's the missing link. Yeah. You know, people need to know they're not in some sort of purgatory somewhere, waiting in this cold place. It's until, true. You know, it, it's, it's tangible, it's real, it's, it's powerful, it's, anyone can do it, and you can and find your happiness again. Exactly. And listen to your dreams, and if, if you're not dreaming, be aware of the signs out there. You They're know? everywhere. Now, where can someone find you online? Or on Again, um, lulubellbooks.com, the lulufoundation.org, speaking events, um, you know, where to get the book, it, it, um, our bereavement support um, mm -hmm. cottage. Um, I'm not opposed at all to someone just my phone number is right on the website. If you've lost a child, if you're mm -hmm. bereaving, pick up the phone, call me. I'll answer. I'll, I'll, you know, I do a lot of phone support, whatever I have to do. And I'm sure it doesn't matter if you've lost a child two years ago, five years ago, 20 years ago. You're all, you're all going through the same, not exact same, everybody has their own life, but very similar struggles. No, I remember one book signing in particular. There was a woman, she was 80 years old, she came to get one of Lulu's books. And she had that look and those tears in her eyes. And she had lost her daughter 70 years ago. Wow. Yeah. And it, it changes who you are, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be a better person because of it. And more empathetic and humble and I'm definitely a better person. I'm definitely a better person. And it's all looking within mm -hmm. and that finding is. your own rose-colored glasses. That's right. You mm -hmm. need to find your own. <laughs> you do. You do. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you. And if anybody has any questions for Gretchen, you can go to my Facebook, uh, which is Spirit Medium Tiffany, and I can give you all the information as far as where to find Gretchen and. Gretchen, if you're on, if you have a page on Facebook, mm -hmm. I do. Yeah, but the you, Lulu Foundation's the Lulu on Foundation. Facebook, and okay. Gretchen Pine. Um, yeah, yeah. So again, thank you so you're much. You're welcome. And thank I you hope for you what you're doing. Join us again soon. I would love to. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, oh. I know. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, next week I will have Spirit Medium Nicole Stevens on. She'll be joining me. And if you are interested, tickets are still available for our Spirit Medium Gallery reading at the Taunton Holiday Inn this Sunday. Uh, just go to my website, tiffanyrice.com. All right. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.